In this video, we're going to talk about tangent lines. So to do that, we need to take just a little bit of a step back and remind ourselves about secant lines. So just as a reminder, say we've got our blue function here, and we want to find the secant line, or the slope, I guess is what we actually want to find. We want to find the slope of the secant line through those two points we have marked, a, f of a, and x, f of x. And we know how to find slope. Our slope is our y values being subtracted divided by our x values being subtracted. So in particular, in this case here with our two points, we're going to have f of x minus f of a over x minus a. So it's just finding slope like normal. Now this is a formula that we use an awful lot in calculus, this guy right here. And because of that, we have a name for it. It's called the difference quotient. So notice, you know, we've got this, you know, nice little definition here, but this is exactly what you've been doing with finding slopes of secant lines. You've been taking the y values, subtracting them, dividing by the x values being subtracted. And notice that name difference quotient, difference means subtract, quotient means divide. So that kind of makes sense of where that name came from. Another way that we sometimes see this different qu difference quotient written is in the second form here, f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. So instead of using our second point up here, x, f of x, what we've said is, all right, what if we go a little bit, I'm going to write it a different way, a little bit away from a. And maybe that little bit that we're going to go is maybe just half a unit. So h is going to be how far away we are from a, and that's going to give us our second point that we're going to use to find the slope of our secant line. So for example, if a is 2, so one of the points that we're using to find our secant line is 2 f of 2. Our other point, if we were going to go half a unit away, would be a plus h, so that would be 2.5. So it would be 2 plus that 0.5. So our second point that we would be using would be 2.5 and f of 2.5. So notice that the, um, the top of our difference quotient stays the same. It's those two y values being subtracted. The bottom looks a little different, but notice what our x values are. One of them is a and one of them is a plus h. So if we subtract those two x values on the bottom of that fraction, we get a plus h minus a, and that is equal to h, because we have common factors and they cancel out. So it's just, it's the exact same formula, just written a little bit differently. And thinking about it in terms of this h is going to kind of help us as we move along down here. And remember that our secant line gives us the average rate of change. Sometimes that's called ARC of f of x, so of our function. And it's going to be from, and like the case that we had up above, uh, a to x. Or we could say from a to a plus h, so a plus that little amount. So the question really comes down to is like, okay. Average rate of change is fine, but what if we want to know how our function's exactly changing at that point right there? Like, what's our rate of change right at that point? Well, that's where my Desmos links come, comes in here. So let's take a look at a little Desmos uh, demo that we have here. So what I've got drawn here, the, so the red graph, that parabola, that's our function. And we're looking at the point when x is equal to 3. And we want to know how this function is changing exactly at 3. So right now, the only tool that we have is a secant line. So what we could do is say, OK, uh, I can't find exactly how it's changing at 3, but I could see on average how far it's, you know, how much it's changing from 3 to 6. Now that's not going to give me a very good estimate of how this function is changing right at 3. So what I could do is take this other point here and get closer to 3. I could go from 3 to 5 and look at that average rate of change. Yeah, that's still not great. 
but we could get a little bit closer, go from three to four. We can even look at how we were talking about going maybe h being a half. So right there. And if we look at the slope of our secant line, we've got a slope sitting right there, sitting there in green, and then we have something called a tangent line. So our rate of change right at that point three, that gives us a tangent line. That's a line that we made just with that point three f of three. But our question is, how are we going to get that slope? But what we could do is we could estimate the slope of that purple line by taking this green line, this average rate of change, and making that h, so how far away we are from 3, we could make it smaller and smaller. Notice as I drag that second point, that green point, closer to 3, we're getting our two slopes are getting closer together. So we're getting real close right there. And I could even zoom in a little bit to see we're pretty close in those two lines. Those slopes are pretty much the same. So as we make that H, how far away we are from 3, closer and closer, we make that number smaller and smaller, our slope of our secant line is getting closer to the slope of our tangent line. So let's go back here and just have a quick picture of a secant line versus a tangent line. So this tangent line here, that's exactly how we're changing. So its slope is the rate of change at A. That's exactly how we're changing, how that function's changing at that point. When we look at that secant line, when we're looking from that point A to maybe over to this point T, this is giving us on average how we're changing from A to T. So it's just a little bit different. And how we get that slope of that tangent line is that we want that other point that we're using to find the secant line. The closer we take that point, if we take it and we drag that point closer and closer to A, we're going to get a slope that's closer and closer to that slope of that tangent line. So that's what this definition is saying right here. It's got a new kind of bit of notation that we will talk about more next week. It's got this LIM. LIM, that means limit. And it's the idea of what we were doing where we were dragging that point, that second point, closer and closer to the one that we were curious about. So we want to know what's happening at 3, exactly at 3 on that Desmos graph. And we're pulling that other point closer and closer to 3. So that's telling us we're taking the limit. So if we had something, if we wrote that out, like the limit as x goes to 3, we're moving closer and closer to 3. So we don't have to totally understand the idea of limits. We're actually going to talk about that very, very soon. But right now we have to just understand that idea that to get that tangent line, we can take secant lines that are getting closer and closer in that interval that we're finding the slope of the secant line on it. We can make it smaller and smaller, and that's going to get us closer and closer to the tangent line.